Yes, y'all know what this is. This is about correlation. So, this video is about correlation, interpreting it, correlation, the basic properties, including how correlation is influenced by outliers. So, turn to your page two of your notes, and let's get started. Okay, now, let's go ahead and put this into our calculator. And as we put this in, let's go ahead and label our, we're about to draw a scatter plot. So please remember, you're putting your scatter plot in your L1 and L2. And actually, you know what, I don't want to touch that data. So I put mine in my L3 and L4. Okay, here it is. Now I'm going to go to, um, going to go to um, stat, calc down to my number four, press enter. I have it in my L3 and L4, so let me change it. And again, yours is wherever it goes. Then I press calculate. Notice there's nothing there in your list, so if you put something there by accident, it's going to give you an error. So I'm going to press enter. Now, here, I've got my equation of a line. I've got my um, coefficient of determination we'll talk about sooner or later and now I have my correlation so let's jot that down now I need to jot down my graph so remember I go to zoom down to stat and here is my graph now I'm just gonna do a basic graph in terms of I'm not gonna even put down what the values are on the axes but in the future when you have to remember you can just press trace and as you press trace and then the arrows, it moves you all around throughout the graph. Now here's a very basic one, meaning, nah, you wouldn't get full credit on the test. Um, but if I'm asking you for just to watch out for you on the AP test, remember the labeling is the most important. And yes, the number says on your axis, but we're just doing a quickie right now. Also, please remember if your diagnostic is off for some reason, let's remind ourselves of how we put that on. Thing won't stay up. Okay, so I have to go down to um, here, second catalog. And as I go down to um, second, the zero button, I have this. And notice the letters. So I want my diagnostic on. So here is the um, alpha. It's already on alpha. It tells me right there. And then I'm just going to press the D, for, and then I'm going to use my arrow going down. And this gives me the diagnostic on. It tells me OK, and I press Enter. And that's how you get your R and your R squared on your graphing calculator, regardless of which model of TI you have. Can't speak for the Inspire. Now I want to bring back my values for my R. OK, so now that I can do the what I mentioned earlier in terms of our objective, so here's the correlation. So as we look at the drug LSD, we can see here that it is linear, that it is strong, and it is positive association between the weight of the um, puppy and the price, the retail price. So let's write that down. Okay, I had to take a commercial break. People came in that graduated last year. So hopefully I'm not too far off of where I left. So as we wrap up this idea right here, I mentioned already the LSD, I remember that. But as I continue putting it in context, there's a long, strong linear positive association between the weight of a growing puppy in New York and retail sales of snowshoes in Alaska. Didn't have any room for in Alaska. So 98.9%. Very strong correlation. But, 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 we already know 
the correlation does not imply causation. So perfect segue into facts about correlation. And I've mentioned this before, but let me hurry up and mention it again. It does not imply causation. What does a growing puppy have to do with snowshoes? Anywhere. Nothing. Not at all. Strong correlation. What is the, um, the lurking variable or common commonality? I don't know. Maybe we should discuss that tomorrow. Because I really don't know. I really, really don't know. Okay? Another strong fact about correlation. Correlation does, does not describe a curve, so I've mentioned this to you before. Please remember that correlation, it only measures the strength of a linear relationship. And then the last thing, and again, this is recapping the idea of correlation. Correlation requires both variables to be quantitative. Okay? So... The last thing I want to show you on correlation is a bunch of different graphs. So, as you go to your um, next page, page three of your um, notes, and just kind of squeezing in here, I think we already did this in most classes, but just in case we didn't. Okay, recap on correlation. So we talked about what we need to look for, but here, this is the idea of strong positive correlation, positive because it's a positive slope, strong because they're clumped together. Here, moderately strong, positive, positive because it's going in a positive slope direction, moderately because it's more spread out, okay? Negative strong, negative slope, and it's strong because, again, they are clustered together. Moderately um, strong but negative, negative slope, little spread out in terms of the cluster. And then here, lastly, weak. I said no correlation, but yeah, I'm sure that there is some correlation that's so low it's not even funny. So that is our information on correlation. Bye-bye.